Pickle, let's go to the hotline, and let's bring in the head coach of the SMU Mustangs. We are pleased to be joined by Coach Sonny Dykes. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Excellent. How are things on the hilltop? You know, everything's good right now. We are, you know, it's a strange time of year. Uh, normally, you know, this time of year is very busy with hosting recruits and recruiting weekends and, and all kinds of things like that uh, when it comes to, you know, trying to get players on your campus and interact with them and, and do all those type of things. And, you know, right now we're not doing that because of the dead period. So we're, we are, it's been good. We've had a, an opportunity to really focus on our current players and we're doing early morning workouts with those guys starting around five thirty in the morning and getting a lot of work done and excited about our group, but, uh, but certainly miss having that interaction with, uh, you know, with the high school uh, coaches and, and players that we normally have. Well, and this this time of year certainly just underscores and belies what has been a, an ongoing, you know, difficult year, troubling, you know, uh, the troubling in some regards, uh, challenging in some regards uh, for, for the 2020 season. Um, you know, now that it's it's over and, and, and you've had a t- chance to take a step back, I- I'm interested, you know, on balance with everything you guys went through and everything you guys had to, to do, um, how do you think you're going to remember the 2020 season there at SMU? Because uh, it, it was certainly there's there's no doubt about it. It was certainly different than any season we've seen. Yeah, I mean, look, we we you know we thought we were going to have a good football team coming into the into the year, and um, you know we had a great home schedule. Uh, really liked the way that our our you know lineup fell. Um, you know, we had you know TCU at home and Cincinnati at home and Houston at home and. Uh, Memphis at home, just a, uh, you know, a really, you know, excellent home schedule. And then we lost the game early against TCU. Um, you know, they had some COVID issues and weren't, didn't have enough guys to, to, to play. And so, you know, had an open date and, and just, you know, kind of got into a flow um, really three or four games into the season and started playing pretty good football, but we were, you know, we tried to, go to the great links to try to keep our players safe and do everything that we could. And it took a toll on our guys. And, and, you know, we didn't play well down the stretch. I think our guys were, you know, mentally and emotionally, mm-hmm. physically worn out. Um, and we were just not the same football team by the end uh, that we were in the beginning. So it was challenging. It was disappointing in some ways, just because we felt like we had a, you know, had a, a schedule that aligned really well and, and uh, was going to allow us to compete for a conference championship. And, and we still, you know, still were doing that up until the last couple of weeks. But, um, you know, it was one of those seasons that, that we'll look back on and, and kind of look at it and say it was one of those years that, that everything could have fallen into place and we just didn't quite figure out a way to make it happen. So, you know, we won seven games, lost three. Um, but I think in a lot of ways we felt like, you know, we certainly didn't play as well as we could have. And, uh, the thing probably, though, honestly, that I'll remember the most is just the players, um, you know, having to deal with all the things they had to deal with. Uh, it was just such a, a time of uncertainty. There was so much unknown um, about, you know, the protocols and, and was it going to keep our guys safe and, you know, could they trust the science? And, and you know, I think the thing that I was most proud of was just the way that those guys made a commitment to each other and, and handled – uh, and handled the season, and it, you know, with with great uh, maturity and great focus. Um, and so I'll always look back on that. I mean, I think the funny thing is, you know, everybody said, well, you know, college kids are going to go to parties, and college kids are going to do this, and college kids are going to do that, and mm-hmm. you know, they don't care enough to keep each other safe. And it, it turns out they do. And so, I, you know, that was the thing I was probably the most proud of: just our players and their commitment to each other, and the way that they sacrificed each other, and. It certainly, you know, sacrificed for each other. It certainly took its toll. As I said, we were, you know, we were just, you know, emotionally worn out by the end of it all. But, uh, but I was really proud of our players and how they how they handled it. And again, their their love and and desire to do the right thing for each other was really impressive. Talking with Sonny Dykes, the head coach at SMU here on Texas Football today. Get involved in the conversation. Hashtag TF Today, Coach. I think it's really interesting that you mentioned that. Um, uh, you know, you guys go seven and three, and and you felt like you left a couple on the table. Doesn't that speak to the changing expectations there that uh, I think there are a lot of past years there on the hilltop where you told fans seven wins and they they throw a parade. Um, have you sensed that shift in expectations, especially after what was that outstanding 2019 season? 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that, you know, seven and three, I think through a lot of us felt like three and seven, um, you know, just because of that reason. You know, I think the thing that you always want to do as, as coaches is, you know, number one, have your teams keep improving and you want to, um, you know, to, to play as well as you're capable of playing. And I think at the end of the day, you know, depending on where you are in your program, um, you know, when I went to Cal, you know, we went one and 11 my first year and did not play well. We won five games my second year and probably played about as well as a football team can play and only won five games. But really, we, we maximized, you know, all the players that we had. I felt like the guys really played well together and, you know, and only won five games. And the next year we went on one, one eight and won a bowl game and, and, you know, had a good year. But, but I think, you know, looking back at this year's team, I'm not sure that we did that. I'm not sure that we played as well as we were capable of, uh, certainly down the stretch, like I said earlier, you know, and I'm not a, uh, you know, a, we don't make excuses in our program, but, but I do think the way that, um, you know, the way that our players approached COVID and, and the way that those guys, you know, what we asked them to do and that they did certainly took its toll physically, mentally, you know, our guys didn't have any days off consecutive days off until uh until thanksgiving break um and so it was you know we were a football team in the end that was worn down and beat up and and you know physically and mentally and, and like i said didn't play our best football and so that part was disappointing but i do think that it does speak to what you guys just described is is our expectations and you know the expectations in our program right now is to compete for a conference championship and and uh you know and, and we have we feel like we have a chance every time we step on the field to win the game and so that's where you want to get as a program. You know, we're certainly we certainly haven't arrived or anything like that. But at the same time, you know, do we we do feel like we have a chance to win every time we we, we line up and take the field. And that's a good feeling. Uh, one guy that I know is moving on to the next level is uh, a guy we're obviously familiar with. Shane Bouchelle, of course, the cover boy of uh, the 2020 summer edition of Dave Campbell's Texas football. And, um, you know, uh, I'm I'm interested. I I, I kind of tie you guys, both of you guys, together so tightly because uh, I think that the the rise in SMU football recently has 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 come, you know, with both of you guys kind of uh, grabbing the controls. He's off to the NFL. From your perspective, I'm I'm interested in what you think his legacy is going to be there at SMU. What when when people when people think about uh, Shane Bouchel SMU Mustang, what do you think they're going to think about? Well, I think the biggest thing Shane did is he gave our program credibility. Mm -hmm. You know, he was uh, <clears throat> obviously a, a highly recruited kid that went to Texas and had a lot of success early in his career at, at Texas. And, you know, when you look at Shane, I think his career path is, is you know, kind of like mine. I mean, you know, we always used to laugh about that together. But, you know, as a head coach, I got off to a really fast start, had a lot of success at Louisiana Tech and, and went to Cal and got the program – you know, headed in the right direction, but it didn't end necessarily the way that I wanted it to. And, you know, got a fresh start at SMU and, and have tried to make the most of it. And I think he feels very similar to that. And like I said, we used to laugh about that together, about, um, about you know, the career path in, in a lot of ways for both of us. Um, you know, he, the thing that he did, as I said, is he, he was a guy that had, you know, could have gone anywhere he wanted to as a transfer, um, you know, had played a lot of football, you know, just needed to, a chance to prove himself and prove what kind of football player he was. And he came in and, and rolled his sleeves up, worked hard. He didn't care about accolades. He didn't care about how many yards he threw for or any of those kind of things. You know, he wanted to win and he wanted to, um, you know, make everyone around him better. And I think that, um, you know, he did that and he elevated our program. You know, he made us incredibly competitive. Uh, he taught our guys, you know, about, what it's like to work hard and to sacrifice and again, to, you know, deflect the praise. And, um, you know, whenever Shane was asked about his, his success, he always talked about his teammates and, and deflected a lot of that, you know? Um, and, and so I think all of us got, got a chance to see somebody who, uh, makes, makes people better. And I think it, at the end of the day, you know, the really great ones, um, in, in their sports, they elevate everybody around them. And they, you know, they have that desire, they create that desire for people to want to sacrifice and to want to give, give everything they have for their football team and for each other. And Shane did that for us. And so I think that's going to be his legacy. Just somebody who, who chose to come to SMU, 
who did everything he could to make the, the place better, left it much better than he found it. And, and, uh, and we're excited to build on, you know, the, that foundation that he helped lay for us. Sonny Dykes of SMU joining us here on Texas Football Today. Uh, Coach, let me ask an, an uncomfortable question, but it's it, I think it's part of the part of the gig. Look, you've, you've been a successful guy at SMU. You, you won 22 games in the last three years. Um, you, you've helped to, to really take this. You know, we've talked a lot about the expectation now of going out there and winning every game. Um, in this industry, uh, when you win games, your phone rings. Uh, people call you. Is it fair to say that your phone has rung, and is it fair to say that you're S- you're at SMU because you want to be? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you know that's any time that you do have success, and particularly someplace that that maybe hasn't had it uh, in a while or had sustained success for a while. I mean, certainly people are going to take notice of that, and you know, and I think all of us as coaches are going to have opportunities. I think when you look at you know when you look at our coaching staff. You know, there's numerous coaches that have had opportunities and some have chosen to move on and, and others have chosen to stay. And, and, you know, I'm part of that same uh, situation as well. And so, you know, I think the thing for me, you know, I have the, the, the fortune of, you know, having gone through something like this before, you know, had a lot of success at Louisiana tech. And Mm -hmm. again, a place that maybe, you know, hadn't had sustained success and, and was fortunate enough to, to have some really good players there and some really good coaches and we won some games and, you know, and then, you know, had an opportunity to go to, to Cal into a power five league and, you know, take over a job that uh, I knew was going to be difficult, kind of needed to be rebuilt. And, you know, and I got to, to, to find out for me what was really important. And, and, you know, I'm a Texas guy. I mean, I was born and raised in Texas and, you know, I left the state for 10 years, uh, three years at Arizona, three years in Louisiana and four in California. And I just have a tremendous appreciation for, you know, football in the state of Texas, high school football. I have relationships with high school coaches. Uh, I just love being someplace where football is very, very important and part of the fabric of, you know, of everyone's life. And, and it's not, it's not like that everywhere. And Texas is very unique that way. And that appeals to me. And, you know, I love living in Dallas. Uh, I love our players. You know, we have a, a, a group of young people that really care about each other and, you know, and, and are very unselfish and have bought in uh, as much as they possibly can. And, you know, and at the end of the day, I get to live in a great city. I get to be around great people. I have a fantastic athletic director and Rick Hart and president and, and Dr. Turner. You know, they really care about college football. They know how important it is uh, to have a great program at SMU and, because they've been, you know, they've been here when maybe the program wasn't great. And so they see the difference. And so because of that, you know, I'm really fortunate to have the job I have. I walk to work most days. You know, I live about three tenths of a mile from, from our football stadium and my kids walk to school and it's just, it's a great life for, for me and my kids. And, um, and so, you know, we have everything we could ask for here and we're really happy, but sure. The phone rings sometimes and, and you always have to, to take a look at things and, and do what's best for, for your family. But, but I've got about as good a situation as anybody in college football here. I really do believe that. and Very excited about the future, and I really do feel like we're just getting started. You know, we've talked about your past a little bit. One more question for, for Sonny Dykes here. And, and um, you know, your time at uh, Louisiana Tech, you know, your time at Cal, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, I think we're, we're probably forgetting the your, your, your first job, which was as an assistant baseball coach at Monahan's. And, and I, you know, I being a FBS college football coach, it's stressful. So it's, 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 it's a lot of hours, it's a lot of work. Is there ever a time where you're like, man, maybe I'll just dust off that, that assistant baseball coaching hat <laughs> and drop down to like a three, a school and go, go be, go, go, go coach first base. You ever thought about that? You know, the only problem with that is <laughs> I taught sophomore English. That was Ooh. my, my teaching field. And so I had you know, five sophomore English classes every day full of 30 students. So I had to grade 150 turn paper, uh, turn papers. And, you know, I spent about five hours a night, every night I would go home grading papers and preparing lesson plans and, and doing all that kind of stuff. So I'm not sure I've ever worked as hard as a college football coach as I did as a high school sophomore English teacher and assistant <laughs> baseball coach. And so to be honest with you, no, I've never, I've never wondered what that would be like because, I still remember standing up there and talking about, uh, you know, to kill, how to, you know, to kill a mockingbird or uh, Shakespeare, you know, whichever Shakespeare we were, Romeo and Juliet, I think was sophomore English. And so I know how difficult that is. I know, 
uh, I have a, a huge appreciation for the teachers and coaches uh, in, in our high schools here in Texas because I know how hard they work in the classroom. And so I don't want any part of that anymore. <laughs> you got to go for like art teacher or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. You got you to find that. Yeah, I was, I, you know, the one thing I wanted to be was marketable. And I thought if I can get a, <laughs> if I can teach English, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll have a chance to get hired some places. And at that point in my career, I didn't know anything about coaching. And so, you know, people hired me just because I could teach English. Yeah. Listen, that's a smart play. He's, he's Sonny Dykes. He's the head coach of the SMU Mustangs. Coach, really appreciate your time. Congratulations uh, again on, on a successful 2020 season, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what your Mustangs have in the future. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me, and love your magazine. Grew up uh, grew up waiting and, and rushing to the, the newsstands when Texas football was published when I was younger, and I uh, appreciate you guys putting Shane Bichelle on the cover this year, and hopefully – We'll have some other players on the covers in, in years to come. So, again, thanks for what you guys do. Appreciate everything and look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you. Okay, thanks. There you go. Sonny Dykes, the head coach, the SMU Mustangs, joined us here on Texas Football Today. 